Welcome to the special stay. Now drink some cook. Back in the day, there were three ways for me to play video games. At home, our family had a PlayStation 2 and a bunch of those CD-ROM games. Does anyone remember those? But at school, we had Flash games. Whenever we were given the free time at school on the laptops, everyone booted up Flash games on Miniclip or Anticon Arcade, and a world of free games were at our feet. Unfortunately, Flash Player is being phased out by the big web browsers at the end of next year. And though I think this is possibly the biggest tragedy for video game preservation since the closing of the WiiWare store, I thought we could celebrate it by looking back at some of the official Edgeworld video games that you can play for free right now. Ed Gould made three games under the Edgeworld name, and today we're going to be playing and reviewing all of them. Actually, it looks like he also made a couple of non Edsworld games, so we should probably uh, have a quick look at this one. Uh... Hey, you! The boss wants you to kill Ticky. Uh... He owes the boss money and he hasn't paid. Kill him, or we kill you. Um, okay. Moving on, the first actual Edsworld game was Quest for Bacon, developed in 2006, and right off the bat we're hit with a title screen and a music loop that doesn't even try and sync up properly. You can play this game in single player or versus mode, and in single player you have the choice between playing as either Matt or Ed. Ed controls using Wazda, whilst Matt is played with the more traditional arrow keys. And can I just say that the character design in this game is really cute. Once you select your character, you're given 60 seconds to collect as many pieces of bacon as possible. You jump around the level, collecting and eating bacon, and that's basically it. Once you touch one of the three pieces of bacon, another one spawns randomly, and this continues until the minute is up. This game was apparently made by Ed Gould as part of his college coursework, and it shows. The whole game takes place in this one completely textureless room, which gets old after a while. It'd be cool if there were different stages, maybe if the colour palette was randomised each time you play, even if the room was a little bit bigger and had different hazards. Then it would have had a lot of replayability in my eyes, but as it is, the game is pretty simple. The character controls are fine, but it's super easy to clip through walls or bump your head on a low ceiling, so you'll find yourself spending ages trying to get that single piece of bacon on the top floor and falling through platforms you swear you should have landed on. The bacon itself also isn't perfect, they sometimes appear in the same place or behind a platform, but the hitboxes are so big that this never really becomes a problem. In single player mode, the game is just a simple high score chaser, but load it up with two players and it's a whole different story. Here, each player takes one half of the keyboard, with the left player controlling Ed with Wester, and the right player controlling Matt with the arrow keys again. Here, the game has all the hectic fun of any two-player competitive game. There's actually an element of competition for a change, and most of the fun comes from just annoying your friend. It's maybe a little bit too easy to get someone stuck in a corner, but that just adds to the chaos if you ask me. If you're going to play this game, I'd recommend playing it with a friend or a sibling. I want to reiterate that this is one of Ed's first ever games, and for what it is, it's actually pretty impressive. I almost certainly couldn't make anything like this with the knowledge that I have, and he went all the way with artwork and animations, with only some scripting help from a user called Psychosis99. It's charming and beautifully flawed in the same way that a lot of Ed's animations were from this time. It feels like something College Me would have made if I had the skills to code and animate, so I'll give it a pass. It's nothing groundbreaking, but for a few minutes of your time, it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you have someone to play it with you. Not So Special Stage was created in 2007 as an obvious homage to the special stages in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. The game uses this ambitious 3D perspective as you play as Ed running down this halfpipe. The goal is to collect as many coke cans as possible whilst avoiding these spiked enemies. If you hit a spiked ball you lose 3 of your cans and there are 50 coke cans in the level and at the end it gives you your score along with how well you did. There's only really one level with all the enemies and collectibles appearing in the same spots each time you play. You'd think this makes the game very easy but it really doesn't. 
The draw distance is very close, so unless you memorise the sequence exactly, it's basically impossible to react in time. It also doesn't help that Ed takes up a lot of the screen, making it even harder to see what's ahead. If you collect enough Coke cans by the end, you receive the Chaos Edmerald, but after playing this game for a good 20 minutes, I was only able to obtain it once. Turns out that I am really bad at this game. I'm not sure if it's the FOV, or the angle, or the speed, or whatever, but I just can't seem to crack this one. I just keep on missing the Coke cans and hitting the black spikes. I'm sure someone out there has been insane enough to collect all 50, but that person is not me. Of all the Flash games Ed worked on, I'd probably say this is my least favourite. Which is a shame, because clearly a lot of love went into it. The perspective is really ambitious, and the artwork is very nice, but it's just not that fun to play. If you could see a little further ahead, and if there were an endless mode with procedurally generated levels, I could see myself sink a lot more time into it. The potential just hasn't really been fully realised. An unofficial HD remake was uploaded to Newgrounds earlier this year by a user called Enzar, with HD graphics, a 16x9 aspect ratio, and the ability to tap space to continue rather than clicking through the menus to navigate. The level layout is more or less the same, but it has a few alterations here and there. So if you're looking for the full, authentic Ed's World experience, this isn't it. Otherwise, I'd recommend playing this version. It's not easy or anything, it's just a lot more enjoyable, in my opinion. If you're a Sonic fan and think you can beat my terrible score, then I'd say give it a go. Maybe this game is really easy and really, really fun. You'll just have to prove me wrong. Finally, we have Bang Bloom. Finally, we have Bang Bloom. Damn it. Finally, we have Bang Boom Splat. And it's the last game that Ed worked on, and it's by far his most complete of his work, down to having multiple stages and an actual storyline. The game starts with this cutscene of Ed reading a newspaper, and he sees an ad asking for testers to trial a new accuracy enhancing drug. He takes up the offer, but when he's given the drug, he swallows it with cola, making him go crazy and see all the researchers in the lab as bad guys, and the game begins. It plays a lot like a simple on-rail shooter, or one of those shooting galleries, and it's the only game so far to be played predominantly with a mouse. You use the mouse to point and shoot at enemies with the reticle and reload using the R key. Each time you hit an enemy, you score points and hitting enough enemies in a row will add to your combo meter, which you can build up to earn more and more points. Miss an enemy once or shoot one of your friends and the combo meter resets. The more observant of you will have already noticed that this is the game that Tom plays it briefly in the episode Fun Dead, a nice little reference from Paul right there. And if you couldn't tell by the HUD, this game is heavily inspired by the original Doom, down to the first stage being filled with demons, but it takes inspiration from other classic games like GoldenEye 007, Zombies Ate My Neighbours, and House of the Dead. Each stage uses a different theme, so one moment you'll be shooting at demons in an alleyway, and the next you'll be shooting paparazzi trying to ruin Tom's rap gig. This was unfortunately before the days of Red Leader, so there's no shooting at the Red Army here. Though you can still technically shoot toward in the face though. Really well my giant robot. The actual gameplay feels very good. The shotgun definitely feels powerful, literally blowing up your enemies in a single shot. Though I found myself constantly reloading whilst the bad guys just stood there waiting for me to shoot them, not attacking or anything like that. You do get to use a multitude of different weapons like a handgun that reloads all your ammo at once, and a rocket launcher with infinite ammo to fire at a giant lizard monster. You need to be accurate with this game, shooting all over the place won't get you anywhere. Consistently hitting your targets whilst managing your ammo will maintain your combo and make the game a whole lot easier. This game is brutal at first, but you get the hang of it eventually. There are four main story levels, but there are six unlockable levels, meaning that there are ten in total. You could unlock them by getting good at the game, or you could be like me and just use cheat codes. They are super easy to find on the wiki, and they help you do all sorts of crazy stuff. The unlockable levels are fine, mostly the same sort of stuff, but with some interesting themes, like a level where you click on the falling coins and a tin can shooting gallery like that one minigame in Wii Play but there's really nothing that new. Overall, a solid Flash game. Any game where I can shoot Godzilla's eyes out with a rocket launcher from the back of a moving helicopter is a good game in my book. So, that was every Ed's World themed Flash game, and yep, those are definitely some late 2000s Flash games alright, they're fine. 
and worth the price of absolutely free, but honestly not much more than that. Don't get me wrong, these games are remarkable for something made by two guys because they thought it would be pretty cool, and I love that there are official games where I can play with Esborn characters as the main focus, but as games on their own, there are so many better ones you could be playing. With that said, these games are remarkable for something made by two guys because they thought it would be pretty cool. Flash games were about the joy of creation. I can go onto any number of websites and play a game created by a single programmer who had a neat idea for a mechanic and decided to go along with it. Not thinking about the profits or industry or even what anyone else thought of it. They just made it because they wanted to see it. And in a sense, Flash games were the perfect medium for Edsborg to take on. They were a product of their time, limited only by the creator's imagination, and were only made because someone wanted to make them. And if that isn't everything Edsborg stands for, then I don't know what is.